What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and in this video I want to discuss the topic that has a lot, lot of uh, misconceptions really. Canceling HTTP request. Can you cancel an HTTP request? Can you cancel a post request? And can you cancel a GET request? And what does it mean to actually cancel a request? So that's what I'm going to discuss in this video. So if you're interested, stay tuned. So guys, if I am a client. This is a React app. This is a JavaScript fetch command. This is a Python request, right? And you have a server here that is running a web server or it could be Express Node.js. And you're making a request to uh, fetch something, a get request or making a change, a post request. If that request is taking a finite amount of time, let's say, and that amount of time is noticeable, six seconds seven seconds right a lot of misconception that there are some functionality at the client side called like abort or cancel that people think that when you do that you are actually canceling that request but you are not you cannot cancel http requests it is very 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 hard without low level surgery right so let me explain and, and what does it mean if I cancel an abort in this case, Hussein? Fetch commands and, and, and other libraries that support HTTP, when, when there's an option to cancel, what is happening here is the client is giving up waiting for a response and it's moving on, right? So that's what it does. It doesn't do anything, right? It doesn't actually send a send another request or tells that command to actually stop executing no right so really if that, that's why microservices are having a hard time with the retries right if if you can cancel a, an http request microservices will be thriving why do we have service meshes why do we have all this logic that you have to do retries and circuit breakers because you cannot cancel a request once it's sent it's gone man right so that's why microservice implements this idea of retries. It's like, okay, let me retry. And when you retry and those services are still executing your old canceled request that you think you canceled, right? They are still running. If you made another request, that will execute another process, another thread, wherever the implementation on the backend. And we'll start, you're stacking up these processes, man, at the backend and, and end up, that service end up dying as a result. And microservices have huge limitation when it comes to that, right? Especially when it comes to retries. And when you keep retrying, that service just keeps uh, piling up and piling up and piling up and eventually dies, right? And and that causes a cascading events on other services as well. That's a very known problem that service mesh tries to control with congestion control and all that stuff. But that's, that's not the topic of today. Today, to come is that can you cancel? Can you actually cancel an HTTP request? And if it, and as I said, it's no, you cannot, then why I can't cancel it? You're saying I've been writing apps for years, right? I've, and I can cancel requests easily, right? So let's think about that a little bit. If you wrote a Python command function, forget about server, client, server architecture. You have a Python script, you have a JavaScript script, right? Go, C sharp, an application that is running locally and you have a function that you called that function, that method, and it's doing something and it's taking a long time. Can you, for, can you cancel that function and make it r return nothing, right? The answer is yes. Well, how would you do it? Well, I'm gonna start, uh, I'm gonna initialize a variable called is canceled. That's one way to do it. And then in my function, every, every now and then, I'm gonna check this variable right and uh, if that variable is uh, set right then i will abort the function if i am in the middle of a loop or something right so you can actually do it but the moment you introduce this variable it's a state right so you have to initialize it you have to know when to set it you have to know when to unset it and, you, and the moment you start doing this you have a state diagram and the moment you have a state diagram it's a stateful architecture now move this whatever you built 
to the web, right? That's a web server and that's a client. Now it's a completely different thing. What, what variable are you talking about? This HTTP is stateless. You cannot make a request, right? And then that request all executing and all of a sudden it says, oh, you know what? Cancel, cancel. You said, you might say, yeah, Hussein, I'm gonna send another request that actually cancels the first request. That's impossible in HTTP. That's impossible. Because every request is a stateless by design. So if you send another request, how do you even know that you're gonna go to the same server? You don't. You don't know that. HTTP, if there is a load balancer, is gonna throw you on another server. It's like, okay, cancel. So it's like, cancel what, dude? I don't have any requests to cancel on. That, that, that server is over there, right? So canceling is extremely, extremely difficult problem. Is it impossible? No, it's not. You can use a queue or a pop sub system to actually cancel if you want to. And that comes back to a centralized, even Redis. You can build Redis and uh, architecture in the middle that actually store that state and all your web servers do that. But is it really worth it? That becomes very, very hard. Now, we talked about HTTP and stateless architecture, and it's very hard to actually cancel HTTP because if it's not impossible, right? So if you're really doing today, if, you, if, if you're thinking that you're canceling a request, you're not, right? So let's just get this. Uh, this is this is for, especially for front-end engineer, right? So you really need to understand that, okay? So if you really think you're canceling, you're not canceling. So abort is just giving up and moving on in your client side, but the backend is still processing. So that being said, let's move on to another topic where gRPC actually supports canceling streams, right? And I saw this when I made the gRPC video. Go check it out. The gRPC video over there. And why does gRPC have this feature? And here's why. gRPC uses HTTP2 as, as a protocol in the low-level protocol. And it has a low-level access to the streams themselves. And when it does that, it can actually uh, have full control over the server and client and there is well-known state already because gRPC is not stateless. It's, the, it's a stateful protocol. Despite it being built on a, in a stateless protocol as HTTP, it is stateful. So when it's stateful, gRPC built mechanism for canceling. They built this for us. So now if you're using um, something in the client side and you said, okay, I made a request, you have a handle on that request on the other side. You have something. You have an object that corresponds to the stream, to that single stream that goes to the backend. And you can still send information and the server is, it's a bidirectional. It's not a request response anymore. The server actually have information and it can continue receiving information from the client even though one request has been sent. The server can send um, random information back to the client. So there is a channel, right? And that's the correct way that I like to uh, represent when it comes to stream. It's a channel, right? Stream is always a confusing term to me, right? I like to use the word channel. And when you have that channel, the server and the client can have a state and they agree on things, right? And you can cancel a given request, assuming that you have implemented the logic at the back end to listen to the canceling events, to listen to those aborting events and do the appropriate things on your back end to cancel that request, whatever that is. It is very extremely, extremely difficult to implement, right? It's not easy, it's not straightforward. But so in a nutshell, can you cancel HTTP request? Answer is no, as far as we know, but gRPC may allow us to do it in the future. Obviously, gRPC is not supported on the web. So, but if you're making a gRPC request, right, from a thick client, I call this client thick that it calls, uh, uses gRPC, but it's not necessarily they are thick. Thick in, in a manner that they are using... Mm, uh, another protocol that is that has some logic in it. Well, I might be wrong, but yeah. So that can actually 
cancel if you implement it correctly and if the backend is gRPC. Other protocols, you can implement your own protocol, assuming that it's stateful, that allows you to cancel, right? You can implement an architecture that allows cancellation, but that is extremely difficult, right? And uh, you can do it with HTTP request. Even with HTTP request, you will be able to cancel HTTP request with that architecture. The idea here is one way to implement the cancellation of HTTP is to do the following. You'll have a centralized state, Redis, MongoDB, right? Or, or any other database, right? Where to store the state. Every request should have a unique identifier. So I made a good request. I made a post request. You uniquely identified, I don't know, GUID or something. And then if you send that request, right? That server will use that GUID to occasionally query that centralized database. Okay, and says, is this request canceled? Is this request canceled? Is this request canceled? Is this request canceled? That's it. Every, I don't know, 10 seconds. And then you can send, if you want to cancel now, you will send another request, completely stateless again, right? And say, I want to cancel the request with this GUID. And if you do that, on the web server, you will write to that Redis DB. You'll write to that MongoDB. You'll write to that centralized database and say, request, this request is now canceled. And the, after 10 seconds, when the so web server, wherever this web server is, it will stop pulling that request. Oh, it's canceled. Abort, 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 abort. You start cleaning up after yourself. And so there is work at the client side. There's work at the back end. There's work at the architecture level. So it's very complex. Now, question back to you. Is it worth canceling request? I really don't know. I think it's a very complicated job, but it might have some beneficial things, especially in a microservices architecture. I need to think about that a little bit more. I didn't think about this within a context of microservices. I believe this will solve the, the retry melt down that microservices have right and then uh, it's a very interesting paper someone can actually write and think about let's have a discussion in the comment section below what do you guys think about all of that stuff right any questions throw them there uh, and i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome